excited like I always am for summit pushes. The Sherpas, whenever it's a climbing day, and they get the juniper going on the Chorten, which is like the stone altar where the prayer flags are spread all over base camp. And for me, when I smell that smell on an expedition at base camp, I know that it's game on. Beautiful morning. Awesome day. Had my shades on, not to get blind. Went in the kitchen tent. I, I told to the cook, I said, I want to drink some coffee. Broken into smaller groups a few kilometers away, the exhausted refugees pushed up towards the Nepalese border. It was their tenth day on foot. When we got to the base of the pass and caught up with our guide, he just pointed to the mountain pass and said, there it is, the Nangba Pass. Go ahead. The unsuspecting Tibetans were walking blindly into a trap. I was actually in the mess tent and I heard a big crack. It's like this. And everybody stopped what they were doing and they kind of, we all kind of looked at each other like, did we just hear what we think we just heard? I heard two cracks. It was definitely gunshots. We didn't know they were gunshots. We thought it was the mountaineers setting up firecrackers for fun. Ang Sidang, my Siddhar comes in, he said, very, very bad soldiers, soldiers shooting, soldiers shooting. And as soon as he said that, then you hear the, the machine gun fire. Then, when we realized the Chinese were shooting at us, I got really scared. I patted Kelsang on the back and said, please, go faster. We're in big trouble. The Chinese are chasing after us. Now, fearing for their lives, the Tibetans scattered, taking cover in the rocky terrain. As soon as I saw the soldiers shouldering his weapon and starting firing, I just went, Oi, stop, uh, and he just turned around. Sort of, back off, it's not your problem, mind your own mountain. And in that second, I just dropped my coffee, went for my camera, and I filmed everything. And then I heard people start shouting, run, encouraging the Tibetans to keep running, and it was almost like a game. Because where we were sitting, the angle that we were looking at things, we thought, the soldiers are just having a show. They're too far away. They made it. It's great. Ha ha, Chinese. And then I see a second group of soldiers closer to the edge of the pass. And I knew that somebody was going to die immediately. I immediately knew that somebody was going to die. And I turned to the clients and I said, you don't want to watch this. And this time we actually saw the guys take shots, and it was aimed shots. They were up in the shoulder, aimed shots. The bullets zipped past our ears. We were scared they wanted to kill us. They were shooting straight at us. There was one really deadly gun. It just fired non-stop like this. The bullets hit very close to our feet. These were really close to me. I filmed them from the kitchen tent, I tore the net open, I burned it with my lighter so I can have an opening and I was filming. This is the first shot that I filmed. This is the first guy that got shot. The person towards the back had been shot and wounded, was still hobbling, but it was obvious wasn't going to make it. We later learned that that person was shot in the leg. Okay, and now he makes it up to, to the ridge, falls down there. Okay, and now he checks for his wound and the rest of the group kept on running, or trying to run, just stumble through the snow, kept on moving towards the top of the pass. They're shooting them like dogs. Yeah. 
you can see the first person in, in, in the row falling down and after that he gets back up again and he goes. It was not a major wound, obviously. Then the last person in the column, that's what I learned in army. In order to stop a convoy, you take out the first and the last person. Someone behind me cried out, and my whole body felt electrocuted. That's a 17-year-old nun. Game over. The other nuns caught up with me. I asked what happened to Kelsey. They said she was shot in the leg. But we have to keep going. I don't know what I felt like. I was just like whacked in the head with something. Honestly, I just said, this is sick. In the UK, if you shoot somebody who's going away in the back, posing no threat to you whatsoever, even if they've just burgled your house, that is going to be murder. I thought, where the hell are we? We're in the middle of nowhere. We're at a base camp that's days walk away from the nearest town, a town which you can describe as something out of a cowboy film. And certainly I thought this is once upon a time in Tibet. I thought if Kelsang is injured, she'll be arrested and die in jail. So I just wanted to stay and go to prison with her. But a monk behind pushed me and said, what's wrong with you? Think of your own life. Then he just dragged me by the hand. So Kelsey was left behind. Further down the valley, 14-year-old Jamyang's group faced close-range gunfire. We looked up above us, and about 80 soldiers were blocking our way. One of the senior officers shouted through a loudspeaker in Chinese. He ordered us to kneel down. So we knelt down, put our hands on our heads, then the soldiers handcuffed and beat us. The climbers were stunned by the cold-blooded killing they had just witnessed. Fear and indecision rippled through the base camp. What can we do? You've got guys armed with AK-47s, Kalashnikov assault rifles, and we've got absolutely nothing. We were all spread out. There is absolutely nothing that anybody could do. The first instinct of many of the climbers was to keep their heads down and get on with what they were doing. Luis Benitez, however, assumed others would report the story. I basically told everybody, look, we got to get moving. I want to get out of here. Grab your packs. Let's let this settle out while we're on the mountain. Because obviously I, I anticipated that the world's going to know by the time we come back down. Out of all the years I had been in the mountains, it was definitely the first time, the only time, that I didn't want to be where I was. Luis made a scheduled radio call to his assistant, Paul Rogers, already high up on Mount Cho Oyu. Luis was obviously quite upset, and, um, and you know, the words were that the, sh the Chinese are shooting the, shooting the place up. And there were probably some swearing as well. And... And I just said, well, I'll see, I'll see you at camp too. All is good up here. And, you know, plenty of questions, but the radio probably wasn't the right place to ask them, really. Um, it was all, you know, I could pick up a lot of tension at base camp just by Luis's voice. 
as climbing teams headed.